Welcome to this QuickBooks 2019 tutorial for beginners on how to make deposits. My name is Matt Holtquist with the QuickBooks University. And in this video, I wanna walk through how to make deposits for payments that have gone to undeposited funds uh, and for other deposits that did not go through undeposited funds, okay? So if you have undeposited funds set up when you receive a payment from a customer on an invoice, or it could be a sales receipt, okay, typically, it's going to default to undeposited funds. So let me show you what I mean here. So uh, if I go to receive payments here under the customer's menu, okay, you're gonna see here when you put in, you know, receive from and the amount and you apply it to an invoice. So let's just, let's just say Christy Abercrombie, let's see where there's an invoice there. So let's, let's say she pays $6,000, okay and it applies it to that invoice you're going to see here the default account typically you can change this in your preferences but default account is undeposited funds okay so basically this is a holding account all right and and the theory being that when you receive a payment uh you're not going to the bank immediately so you may go to the bank maybe once or twice a week and so it goes to undeposited funds all right you got to be really careful with this because some people think okay it's going into the checking account or you know whatever your bank account but it's not it's going to undeposited funds and this is an account that is on your balance sheet all right so if i go over here and i say uh, look at my balance sheet all right we should see Let's see, I need to change the date on here. Let's go to 1231. All right, so you're gonna see this account, undeposited funds, all right? So this represents money that you have received but have not taken it taken to the bank yet, all right? All right, so let's just use this example. We'll say $6,000, we received it on 1215 and it goes to undeposited funds. So let me just go ahead and save and close this. All right. So now when you actually take it to the bank, you've got to go into QuickBooks and say banking make deposits. All right. When you do this, this screen will pop up with your undeposited funds. These are all the funds that you have to take to the bank. All right. So now let's say that you only take this, this and this to the bank for whatever reason. So the total is 6490. Okay, you want to make sure to make it easy when you reconcile that you have a deposit slip and well, if you're doing remote deposit, but make sure that this specific deposit equals the $6,490. All right. What I mean is if you let this accumulate and you make this deposit, but don't record it in QuickBooks, and then you go in later in the week and you do this deposit. Well, in QuickBooks, it's going to show a deposit of 13100 but you physically went and made two separate deposits. All right, so when you go to reconcile your bank account in QuickBooks, it's going to make it difficult to match it up. So match up your physical deposits with the, the amounts that you move from undeposited funds to the bank account. It makes it much, much easier. All right, so let's hit OK. We're going to say that these are the amounts that we're going to deposit. But let's say that you get a payment that doesn't apply to an invoice. OK, it could be a refund of, you know, a vendor payment or it could be, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe it's some kind of referral fee or something that is not recorded through undeposited funds, which means it would be money you received that did not get applied against an invoice. It wasn't for a sales receipt. It was just money. All right. And it could be that you don't do invoices in your business, or maybe you don't even do sales receipts. It could be, um, you know, a, a daily sale uh, recording that you're putting into QuickBooks, uh, but the money you're putting to undeposited funds. Okay. So in that case, all you're going to do, you can do it right on this. If it's with this deposit, okay, you can put it on here. Again, you want to make sure this deposit matches your deposit receipt or the amount of the deposit you are physically taking to the bank. It's going to make your life much, much easier. All right. So let's say that, let's just assume that this is the deposit. Okay. So we just hit save and close. We made this deposit. But now let's say that we did get some kind of check and we want to go to banking, make deposit. And we are not actually depositing any of this money. So we're going to cancel this. And let's say that we got a refund 
uh, from, let's go down here. We're going to go to a vendor. Let's say that, oh, I don't know, Express Delivery Service. We overpaid them and they are giving us a refund. Okay, so in this case, it's not going to be other income. This, whenever you get a vendor refund, I always uh, prefer to put it against the original expense account. Okay, that way it nets with that expense. All right, so let's say that this was uh, some kind of delivery. I'm not sure where this would have been. Let's, let's say it was postage, okay? So this, we're gonna put in here a refund of over payment or you know, whatever that refund is, okay? You can put in the check number, payment method, check. Okay, if there's a class, you're gonna assign this to a class. We'll say overhead and the amount is $55. Okay, so now again, if you take this to the bank, you want to make sure that this deposit matches your deposit slip or your remote deposit, but that individual deposit, make sure it matches. That way you can tie it out easily when you do your bank reconciliation at the end of the month. All right. Okay, so we've got this deposit and um, we just hit save and close. All right, so now what we've done, if we go to our checking account, all right, let me expand the date here for the full month all right i want to go through a debit is a deposit in a checking account all right so you're going to see the two deposits one here it says split because this was multiple uh, payments received from customers and then here 55 dollars. this was the refund of the postage all right and what this does let's see if i can pull up a profit and loss and let me customize this here to just say total Okay, and 1231, I'm going to go to, since this was 2023, all right, I'm going to make this 2023. And if we hit OK, I want to go to the postage account to show you what this does. Okay, right here, postage. All right, so you're going to see where there's a reduction in the expense because this was a refund of the expense. So this is what it does on your profit and loss. It reduces that expense. All right, so that's how to make a deposit. If you have any questions, any comments, please leave them below. And uh, also head over to the QuickBooks University. Got uh, great stuff over there for members. Uh, happy to have you as a member as well. A member is somebody who purchases the tutorials and then they become a member of the QuickBooks University. Head over there now, qbuniversity.org.